This fourth video in the series shows a comparison of pulled OLS and fixed effects least squares dummy variable estimation and the comparison will allow us to definitively determine which model is more suitable for our working data and we can make our decision in one of two ways. The first is to use the restricted F test analysis and the second is to do a wall test of differential of the differential intercepts from the LSDV regression. So to do this, we're going to still be u utilizing the same data set consisting of 10 firms with uh, 20 years of data yielding 200 observations. And in this, we're going to be regressing market capitalization against capital expenditure and book value of equity. So with respect to the restricted F test, also referred to as partial F test. Our restricted model is going to be the pooled OLS uh, model, and that's because it assumes uh, it uses uh, common intercepts and fewer coefficients. As you can see here, only three coefficients in the case of our model. The unrestricted or complete model is going to be the fixed effects uh, least squares dummy variable model, where as a result of the introduction of the dummy variables, we're going to have um, 10 different coefficients actually um, w with respect to the dummies but the differential intercepts though are going to be the ones that I I put here in the box because these are the intercepts that um, are going to tell us by how much we are different for each firm each firm is different from the rest so to speak so with as a, res as a result the null hypothesis will be trying to verify the question whether these differences, this differential, these differential intercepts are, amounts to zero. So to do that, we're going to construct the partial F test and then we could either calculate using sum of squares error or R square. Either way, the key question here is, as a result of the introduction of the dummy variables, have we been able to significantly reduce the previously unexplained variation as to prefer the least squares dummy variable fixed effects model over the uh, pooled OLS model? And in this analysis, the answer is yes, because as you can see, F statistic significantly exceeds the critical value of F, which is only 1.93. So P value is very much below the 1% level of significance. And so we, we can conclude that the inclusion of the differential intercept significantly improved the model. So now, with respect to the wall test, first, using this illustrative example right here, where we're regressing y against x1 and x2 and in this respect we're going to have two dummy variables d1 would take on the value of 1 for firm 1 as you see here and d2 will take on the value of 1 for firm 2 as you see here so that the reference category here is going to be d3 where is going to be firm number 3 where d1 and d2 are both equal to 0. So as a result I showed in the previous videos that the intercept term unique for firm 3 the reference category is beta sub 0 while the intercept terms for the intercept values for firms 2 and firms 1 and 2 is going to be beta sub 0 plus beta sub 1 which is the coefficient of each dummy variable and ditto for, for our firm 2. So as you can see here, beta sub 1 and beta sub 2, the coefficients of these respective dummy variables are telling us by how much the intercept values of firms 1 and 2 differ from that of firm 3, the reference of, uh, variable. So wall test is going to be testing those differential intercepts, beta sub 1 and beta sub 2. Now with respect to our working data, which we estimated in uh, one of the previous videos, these were the differential intercepts that were calculated and I showed how well, that were obtained actually and I showed how to calculate the specific intercepts for each of the firms which you find right here but our focus as I indicate here is on the differential intercepts because each dummy variable coefficient right these uh, coefficients that you see here shows us by how much each firm differs from the reference category uh, which is uh, beta sub zero but the question though is are these differences 
large enough. And for that, we're going to go back to eViews. And this is the equation for LSDV. And this is the command. And this is the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, which we're going to be testing. And so let's um, do, uh, and after we do that, we're going to obtain these results that you see here. So let's go on ahead and show it up right here on eViews. I've already highlighted my variables and all I got to do is right click on any of them and open as equation. And that's it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and estimate the panel uh, fixed effects um, least squares dummy variable. Nothing else to do. Just click OK and that's the output that you saw earlier with the beautiful coefficients and their uh, p-values. So to get this situated, I'm going to go to View coefficient restrictions, wall test, and then type in the null hypothesis, which I pre-copied for quick of uh, video, and OK. And as you can see here, both the S statistic and the chi-square statistic are telling us, based on the p-values, that the differences are statistically significant. So as a result, we conclude that accounting for heterogeneity is definitely important in determining in this example how capital expenditure and book value of equity jointly affect market capitalization. And that's it.